when you think about the actual AI chip that is utilized in all of these AI infrastructures, NVIDIA is the first player to come out with one that is capable of doing all of that compute. Uh, the next second best would be AMD if they come out with their chip by Q4. So it's a timing issue with them. They are a little bit later, but uh, I had interviewed Lisa Sue in the past, and she had said we worked 15 years on this. So it's not like we don't know what's going on. We're just a little bit later in executing. Then you have a, a player like Intel, a company like Intel, that may not have that GPU chip, but wants to build those GPU chips and be part of uh, that entire process. So is it warranted? Maybe for now. Uh, I think it, just in the future, is this all going to be an upfront cost? Is everybody going to put all this money into buying the chips? And then what happens a year from now? Will they keep buying chips? Are they going to buy the software that goes with it? So how is that momentum going to continue to justify this high price, this yeah. high valuation and market cap? Harsh, you're practically bearish. You only have a $500 price target. I'm sure you've seen your colleagues on the street. I think I saw 780 this week. Um, so t walk us through, what do you think they're going to do revenue? What do you think they're going to do data center, uh, you know, and, and valuation if you want to chime in on that too? Thanks for having me on your show, guys. Uh, so I think the most important number is going to be the data center number. I have no doubt that NVIDIA will deliver on the data center number. When we talk to the buy siders or the people that actually buy the stock, they have a little bit of a longer term view. A lot of them are looking at a $50 billion number at the end of next fiscal year. That's wow. the, that's the big B that everybody wants to get to for data center business. So this is sort of a step along the way. Now, this quarter is particularly critical because NVIDIA has guided to something like a 78% sequential increase for the July quarter. And if we somehow stall, then getting to that 50 billion number becomes incredibly hard. So I think the importance of today's number, the guide for October quarter, is that the momentum continues to, to occur. And for us, we're looking at a couple of things. First, inertia. You don't grow 78% in a quarter and then simply stop. I don't think the customers that are lined up at your door will simply uh, have everything by the end of this quarter. I suspect that there will be a flurry of orders that extend into the future quarters. Second, we are seeing a tailwind from China. There is geopolitical you know, headwinds uh, for China associated with U.S. restrictions. And the Chinese companies, frankly, it's in their interest to buy as much as possible, as quickly as possible. So we're seeing a tailwind there. We are seeing a, a shift towards general purpose GPU, which is a trend back towards NVIDIA. And then there's a, a new kind of a data center in play, a GPU-only data center. So there's these private companies like Corweave and Lambda. Hmm. I think you guys hosted uh, Corweave CEO. That company is going to go from 30 million in revenues last year to 500 million in revenues this year hmm. to 2 billion in committed revenues next year. And this is the NVIDIA GPU pure play from a data center angle. So that's where a lot of your demand is coming from. So let me, uh, th there is this thing called the law of large numbers, uh, Harsh, and I I'm not exactly sure what the law of large numbers says, by the way, <laughs> but, it, but it seems to me that it, it, what it fundamentally says is that when you grow at this rate and you get to this scale, compounding growth at the current rates becomes more and more difficult as you move forward. So there is an argument, I suppose, that this is as good as it might get for NVIDIA. Uh, talk to me about that and tell me I'm full of water. So I, I don't think you are. I think you're spot on and, and on to something very important from the standpoint of how the stock will act. I do think that we're probably at peak growth rate. I mean, 78% sequential growth rate followed by 20% something sequential growth rate. These are astronomical numbers. So I do think with with particularly uh, chat GPT opening up or open AI's um, system opening up, there's been a, a flurry of activity towards NVIDIA's GPU. Uh, and I think as a lot of people start getting these chips and they start getting their systems in place, mm -hmm. and then AMD has alternatives and potentially Intel has alternatives, so does the AWS, I think you will see the growth rate start to slow down. Not saying they'll go negative, but they won't stay at the sky high right. rate that we're at, which I think is healthy for NVIDIA, healthy yeah, for yeah. the market. Yeah. Harsh, given the exposure that NVIDIA has to China, do you think that it, analysts across the board are factoring in any type of weakness going forward or even double ordering that we've been rumored to hear about? So I don't think the exposure is that tremendous. The U.S. government's taking care of that issue with the restrictions that it has in place. So China is allowed to buy a basically a last year's version, a trimmed down version of the, 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 the A100 chip called the A800. And I believe the total exposure may be somewhere in the 15 percent range, but they cannot buy, to be clear, they cannot buy the latest, greatest chip that right. NVIDIA puts out. 
Um, so that's one thing. In terms of double ordering, I can certainly guarantee you there's double ordering. There's always double ordering in semiconductor business. It's just the, the beast. And the question becomes, is it enough to become a problem in the near term? So we, we, we do anticipate that somewhere in the 2024 year calendar, probably in the second half, we'll go through a digestion period. Mm. If you recall crypto, crypto went through a period of two year growth before it finally caught up, the double ordering finally caught up and crypto crashed. Now we do think that generative AI is more real, more tangible than crypto, but I can, I can assure you there's a small element of double ordering, no question about it. Well, I don't think that's the comparison they were looking for yeah. is to crypto.